Luke, I am your father. Okay. Yeah. It's really not that cool. Sleep apnea and diabetes are separate conditions, but much like cookies and milk, they tend to go together. Uh, today, it's estimated that about uh, 18 million people have sleep apnea, and as the name suggests, it has to do with sleeping. Now, when you normally sleep, you know, your body is resting, your brain is resting, uh, and this is good. You need this rest to recover um, for the day and to be refreshed for uh, the next day. Uh, human beings have been sleeping for a very long time, and most of us, like me, uh, really kind of enjoy it. Uh, now, with sleep apnea, what happens is uh, sometimes hundreds of times a night, you are actually woken up. You may not be conscious of it, you may not be aware of it, uh, but part of your brain gets repeatedly woken up throughout the night uh, because your lungs don't have enough air. Now, there's like, several reasons that this can happen, but the most common uh, form of sleep apnea with diabetics is called obstructive sleep apnea, and that's where your throat actually physically closes uh, and won't let the air through that your lungs and your body needs. Now, this can throw your heart into a bit of a panic, um, and it starts to work harder to circulate blood um, around your body because it has less oxygen in it, and eventually, a piece of your brain has to wake up up and then tell those throat muscles uh, to open up so that you can breathe again. Now, you might be uh, asleep, uh, you might feel asleep the entire time this happens, but again, in, uh, in severe cases, this can happen hundreds of times of night. Oftentimes, snoring is associated with sleep apnea because the snoring sound is the sound of your airway opening back up uh, in order to let uh, oxygen through, again, that you really need. So the challenge with sleep apnea is that it's really severe. Uh, it can really hurt and damage your body, uh, but you're sleeping during the worst of it, so it's hard for you to perceive. So that's why a lot of doctors are now giving people with diabetes um, sleep studies. Now, a sleep study is very basic. You go to the hospital oftentimes or the clinic. Um, they put you in a special room uh, with a bed. They cover you in sensors um, so that they can watch your uh, breathing and your heart um, and your brain uh, and all of that. Um, and then they have you go to sleep. And then a group of people watches the monitors uh, to see how many times a night you're being woken up um, or how many times a night your airway is closing um, and, and all those sorts of things. Now this doesn't sound like fun, and the reality is it isn't. But think about it this way. When, you're, when the oxygen is cut off because your throat is closed, your heart goes into a panic mode. It's almost like uh, the feeling when somebody jumps out and scares you uh, randomly and you know all your body releases stress hormones um, and your heart starts beating really fast. That's obviously not a fun feeling or a pleasant feeling. Well, now imagine that happening, you know, sometimes dozens, sometimes hundreds of times a night. That's going to put stress on your heart. It's going to put stress on your lungs. Uh, those stress hormones that get released are actually going to cause your body to release more glucose into your sugar, which is like the exact opposite thing you want if you're diabetic. Um, so... Sleep apnea is something to be taken incredibly seriously, and we find uh, today, uh, you know, it's becoming more and more common for people to get sleep studies and get diagnosed. Now, the standard way of treating sleep apnea is with one of these. Uh, this is a CPAP machine, and what it does is you comes, it comes as a machine, and you get a mask, and you put the mask kind of on your face with the, this rather unfortunate looking uh, contraption, um, and you're expected to sleep with it. And what it's gonna do um, is it's gonna pressurize the air that is going into your body. So instead of breathing kind of normal thin air, you're gonna breathe much more pressurized air, which is gonna help keep your throat open uh, throughout the night. Now I'll tell you right now, this one's mine. I call it the infernal contraption because I don't like it very much. I would vastly prefer not to have to use it. But what I also have to admit is when I do use it and when I did started to use it, 
I started to feel better. I noticed I was more awake during the day, I needed less naps, and I honestly just felt better about the fact that I wasn't hurting and harming my heart every night while I was sleeping. You know, my heart has enough issues to deal with without, you know, me adding more on top of it. So yeah, let me just say, dealing with sleep apnea and dealing with this machine every night is a pain in the butt, and I don't like doing it. But I would prefer it to the alternatives because when you're already working so hard to try to manage your diabetes and get the exercise that you need and avoid the snacking, the last thing you need is to have lower energy levels uh, because you're not sleeping, because that makes it harder to get the exercise, it makes it easier to snack to stay awake, and you oftentimes end up taking more naps and doing less of the things that you enjoy. So if your doctor sends you for a sleep study, go. It won't be fun, but it might save your life.